Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm super excited to share this topic with you and share some of my experiences. I've always been very conscious of healthy habits and doing what's best for my body and my mind, but especially with my recent diagnosis, I have been reevaluating and kind of restructuring my daily routines, my daily habits, all of that kind of stuff to make sure that I'm doing what is best for my health in every way. As I'm sure you are familiar with, there are so many videos and blog posts and articles and stuff like that that are like life hacks or health tips, but like very few of them actually have scientific evidence or scientific backing to support those claims. And as you guys know, I'm all about cutting through, cutting through like all of the just random useless tips and tricks that are always thrown around. So this video is five proven ways that you can easily improve your health on a day-to-day -day basis. We have three tips that are more physical health based and two that are more mental health based. Both are super important and both deserve to be paid attention to. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Be sure to give it a like if you find it helpful and let's get started. The first way you can improve your health that we're going to talk about is establishing a morning routine. And this is because it really sets the tone for the rest of your day. Your routines and habits are the architecture of your life, so you want them to be intentional. Your morning routine starts right when you wake up. The best way to wake up is to get up the first time your alarm goes off, no hitting snooze, and start your morning routine right away. So for me, that usually includes snuggling Ollie before I really get going. But the worst thing you can do when you first wake up is to grab your phone and start scrolling because by doing so, you're A, starting the habit of checking your phone throughout the day, which can be a huge time suck, and B, opening yourself up to this immediate information overload, which really just sets you up to be reactive instead of being in control of your priorities and your feelings and actually a study by the university of british columbia also found that when their participants limited their time spent checking emails their stress and anxiety levels were lower and feelings of positivity were higher so the last thing you want to do when you first wake up is to check your email so try to stay off your phone or at least avoid social media your email the news for the first hour or so of your day so you can get started on the right foot and keep that stress managed once you get up you should chug some water as soon as possible we lose lots of water overnight just by breathing so it's important to replenish and rehydrate First thing, I like to just have plain water. Some people add a lemon or apple cider vinegar to their water as well. Some people have like celery juice for digestion. There are tons of different variations of this, but the first thing you should do is hydrate. Then right after you drink your water, I recommend going on a 15 to 30 minute walk. This is what I do every single morning and it has absolutely become an integral part of my routine. It's a total game changer because getting moving outside in nature just feels really good. It helps you wake up, clear your head, manage stress, um, improve digestion, and just like start your day on the right foot. No pun intended, but I just really love starting my day with a morning walk and I would totally recommend. Another great habit to incorporate into your morning routine is to plan out your day. And by mapping out your day in a concrete um visual way you get a really clear idea of what you need to accomplish and how you can better manage your time and obviously it's really important to be flexible because life happens and sometimes you have to shift stuff around but having a rough outline is super helpful because then you can figure out like exactly how much you can accomplish in a day you may also have to wake up a little bit earlier to fit in all these habits but taking some me time right away in the morning seriously just allows you to be the best version of yourself for the rest of the day because you've probably heard of this phrase before but by filling your own cup first you're able to pour into others remember that you can't pour it from an empty cup so take time to fill yours first uh, some other ways to prepare yourself for the day include reading and meditating i love to read a self-development book in the morning because it just puts me in a good mindset and provides a solid dose of motivation to start the day 
I really like hearing from different people. I'll put my reading list in the description box. But meditating is also an amazing habit that has benefits far beyond just improving your mindfulness, which provides mental clarity and calmness. A recent study found the first neural evidence, which means changes in your brain, for why mindfulness, the ability to live in the moment without distraction, seems to produce a variety of health benefits. So it's no longer just kind of this woo-woo concept that meditation helps you out. It is now scientifically proven to improve your health, which is really really cool. I like to use apps like Headspace or Calm if I'm doing a guided meditation, but you can absolutely meditate on your own or use YouTube videos or um, Spotify playlists or anything like that to get your meditation in. We're looking at th this beautiful time lapse of the night sky because before your morning routine can even happen, you need to sleep. And I figured that this would be a cooler visual than footage of me sleeping because that's kind of creepy. But you should aim for seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Some people need a little more, some need a little less. But generally, seven to eight hours is a good range to aim for. And sleep is so, 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 so important because without it, you seriously aren't able to perform your best. It's harder to make healthy choices. You're more prone to gain weight and you're subjecting yourself to early aging on a cellular level. It's not just your eye bags the next day. It is a cellular level, you guys. So this is important. In one study, researchers found that being sleep deprived is as bad as being drunk the next day. No joke. Um, they, when they were tested, response speeds were up to 50% slower for some tests and accuracy measures were significantly poorer at uh, than at a blood alcohol content of 0.05%. After longer periods without sleep, their performance reached levels equivalent to a blood alcohol content of 0.1%. So when it comes to sleeping, you need it or else your performance will suffer as if you are drunk. And you don't want to go to work drunk. You don't want to drive drunk. You don't want to go to school drunk. <laughs> so why would you want to go to those things sleep deprived, you know? Next, uh, when it comes to making healthy choices, a 2015 study found that insufficient sleep in students led to increased soda consumption and decreased vegetable consumption, and another found that those with poor sleep patterns are more likely to be overweight or obese and have poorer metabolic health. So obviously sleep is super important to set yourself up for success in the following day or days, and it really just allows you to perform your best and make healthy choices. So skimping on your sleep just sets you up for self-sabotage basically in a lot of ways. And a lot of people have trouble falling asleep and that's what prevents them from getting good sleep. So here are a few tips to help your body and mind transition to bedtime. Number one, limit your screen time. The short wavelength blue light that is emitted by our screens like on our phones, our computers, tablets, all of that stuff, um, it damages the duration and the quality of your sleep. So try to limit your screen time, set like a time that you're done working on your laptop, and then also be sure to put your cell phone on night mode and that limits the amount of blue light that it's emitting. Another way is to go for a walk outside because by getting away from that artificial indoor lighting, your body is able to recognize that it is nighttime and to wind down and your hormones can shift, your um, melatonin levels can rise. And another thing that aids in that is lowering the lights in your house and do something relaxing like reading a book or whatever helps you kind of wind down at the end of the day. Lastly, you can supplement with natural sleep supplements such as melatonin or magnesium. I take True ZMA by PE Science, which aids in recovery and then also helps you sleep more deeply and wake up feeling super refreshed. So I love taking this. It always makes me feel amazing. This next one is probably a no-brainer since you guys are on my channel, which focuses on fitness. So I'm sure you knew it was coming, but resistance training is a super important way to improve your health too. Through either lifting weights, using your body weight, or other forms of resistance, you can increase lean body mass, decrease fat mass, increase your resting metabolic rate, aka boost your metabolism, increase and preserve bone density, decrease anxiety and depression, 
because exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy, and happy people don't shoot their husbands. They just don't, you know? Anyone, anyone illegally blonde reference? As I was saying, um, there are tons and tons of benefits to resistance training, including preventing early death and even improving your sleep. So in the last four years, there have been 29 studies that have shown improved sleep quality and or duration from resistance training. So if you're having trouble with your sleep, then definitely focus on your training too. And sadly, you guys, 80% of Americans don't get enough exercise and I don't want that to be you. So try to get at least 30 minutes of daily activity like resistance training, plyometrics, calisthenics, cardio, something like that at least five days a week and that will put you on the path to better health. Now that we've covered training, it's time to talk about nutrition. So most people know what foods are healthier than others. That's not usually the problem. Like you know that a carrot is healthier than a Cheeto. But many people struggle with making healthy choices when they're in the heat of the moment and they leave it up to willpower and discipline, but sometimes those things falter, especially if you don't have a ton of practice. So the key is to plan to eat healthy before the moment comes because making good choices starts at the grocery store or before you get to a restaurant. And I'm sure that you've heard these tips before, but when you go grocery shopping, go in with a list and avoid shopping when you're hungry, which makes you more impulsive. And remember, if you don't buy unhealthy food, you're not going to eat it at home. So just be strategic with your grocery shopping. And that's not just a common saying, just a silly saying. It's scientifically proven. So a 2014 report by the Center for Science in the Public Interest found that even short-term food deprivation can lead to a shift in choices such that people choose less low-calorie and and more relatively high-calorie food options. And this suggests that, quote, people should be more careful about their choices when food deprived and possibly avoid choice situations when hungry by making choices while in less hungry states. So this means that junk food is much more tempting when your blood sugar drops, when you're hungry, and that's especially dangerous when you're checking out because they also found that 90% of the food found in the checkout lanes is unhealthy. So just plan ahead, be prepared, and don't be hungry. Another option to avoid grocery shop impulse shopping is to shop online because you are going to search out what's on your list and it's a lot um, less tempting to just browse random stuff, browse like the snack aisle and stuff like that. So shopping online has been shown to, um, help people with healthier eating habits and get a cheaper and healthier grocery haul. Lastly, when you're dining out, it's best to research the restaurant's menu before you even get there. Either look on their website or check out some photos on Yelp and give yourself like one to three healthy options of things that are healthy. They are fitting for your goals in terms of macronutrient or calorie content. And that way the healthy decision is made ahead of time. You don't need to stress about it. And it's not like saved for a time when you're hungry and impulsive and likely to make a not so great choice. This last way to get healthier is all about mental health, which definitely isn't talked about enough. And I was super excited to find a bunch of um, scientific support for expressing yourself, talking to people, journaling, and taking care of your mental health in terms of crossing over into your physical health. So um, I even found this study by UCLA psychologists, which showed that verbalizing our feelings makes our sadness, anger, and pain less intense. So that means that speaking about our experiences literally makes them hurt less. And then another article I found explained that journaling can improve symptoms of chronic disease and improve overall well-being. Um, while sharing your feelings helps cope with stress, and that that applies to sharing it with another person. 
um, as well as sharing it on paper or just expressing it in some way. And another important aspect of self-expression that you guys see me talk about a lot with Grind and Be Grateful is practicing gratitude, which can be part of your morning or your evening routine. So start by getting into the habit of writing down um, what you're grateful for or saying it out loud three to five things that you're grateful for. They can be huge, they can be tiny, and you get bonus points for sharing with someone else because I think it's always a good idea to spread the gratitude. And again, I'm excited to find scientific support for this because it's been proven that gratitude consistently associates with many positive social, psychological, and health states, such as increased likelihood of helping others, optimism, exercise, and reduce reports of physical symptoms which is so cool um gratitude is more than just you know writing in your journal and that's where it ends it goes into every other aspect of your day and even your physical health hey guys it is now tuesday evening and i just wrapped up editing this video it ended up being a lot more time consuming than i realized i first started planning it like mid last week so it's been a work in progress for quite a while and that explains why i haven't uploaded a new video in quite some time but i really hope that it was worth the effort and that you guys enjoyed it if you did please take a second to give it a thumbs up and i would also love to hear your suggestions for any future video topics that you're interested in seeing on my channel because i always want to make sure that i'm serving you guys and giving you the information motivation whatever you're looking for that you need so definitely leave a comment down below hit that thumbs up button thumbs up button and I will see you guys again very soon a lot sooner than you guys had to wait for this video I promise love you so much and I hope you have a great rest of your day Mwah.